I'm joined today by Abby Pecorello, class of 1988. Um, <laughs> that was a good year. I was only um, six when I graduated. <laughs> I'm a prodigy. I'm a prodigy hot dog. <laughs> Well, thanks, thanks for thanks for joining me today, and uh, you can talk maybe a little bit about your not dog um, in a little while. But let's start talking about your experience in Newark Academy. Do you? Um, yes, I loved Newark Academy. Um, I just want to say that I have two older brothers. I'm the youngest. I have two like brothers, and they went to public school. And when it came time for me to go to high school, my mom was like, yeah, no, she's not. She needs something different. She needs something special. She's like artsy fartsy and like funky and like like a big thinker and a do gooder. And um, she sent me to Newark Academy. And at the time I was like, no, I want to go to Columbia. I'm from South Orange. And um, she's like, no. And it was like the worst thing in the world that I was going. I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. And I got there and day one, I was like, I love this place. You know, I probably didn't admit till several years later that my mom was right, but I do stand um, here telling everybody today, Susan Miller was right. Um, it was the perfect place for me. I, it just like embraced me, appreciated me, respected me and taught me in the way that I needed to be taught and inspired me. It was, it was such a great experience. So I want to say that. Um, Gosh, I don't think there was a teacher I didn't like. I had Mr. Hudipol for math um, and I had him for three years and I loved him. He was amazing. He was like this young teacher that had just graduated. He was awesome. I had Mrs. Newman who was everything to me for history. She was so wonderful and magnificent and special. I actually, um, I have a daughter who's in college and I found my college recommendations and she had written me one. And I guess like back in the day, like teachers would share them with you. And, you know, Mrs. Newman in my college recommendation was like, let's be honest, Abby's a B student, which, you know, go me. Um, and she's like, but she is so special and so amazing. Like I went to Wash U, that woman got me into Wash U, 18 kids my year applied to Wash U, two people got in, me and Evan Friedel. And it was because of Mrs. Newman's recommendation because she saw me. And I feel like that is the great thing about all the teachers at Newark Academy. They saw me, they knew who I was, they appreciated me. No, I did not do things the way that everybody did things and I did not think the way that everybody thought, but they embraced that and respected that. I, I loved Mr. Borlow, oh, he was amazing. I loved um, Dr. Garrett. He was like, oh, captain, my captain. I like, you know, when I saw Goodwill Hunting, I was like, I had him as a teacher. Um, I loved his wife too, Mrs. Garrett. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, oh, I love Dr. Schaffler, who was so funny and so amazing. Um, he just made me laugh. I had Madame Berg for French. She was an ex Rockette and she was amazing. I mean, I, I have to tell you, I could, I loved Wash U. It was amazing. I remember maybe two teachers there. I think I remember every single person I had at North Academy. Like I yeah. just loved it. And they all just had such an impact on me. I, I, I really do not think there was a teacher. I, well, there was one teacher I didn't like. Okay. We don't have to name names. No. <laughs> And, and were you, did you perform at all while you're at New York Academy? I did. Oh, I love Mr. Jacoby. How could I not say that? I love Mr. Jacoby and his beautiful wife. Um, yes, I did. I was. In, I tried out for a play my freshman year. They were doing Our Town, and I just was like, um, you know, I just was like, I'm gonna try out. Um, and I was in Our Town. I was. I don't know, was my character name Rebecca, maybe? Um, but I loved it. It was amazing. And um, I always did the plays and not the musicals, although I love musical theater so much. Hold on, I'm going to take off my hot dog. <laughs> I'm wearing sunglasses over my glasses, and you're, like, putting pressure on my the bridge of my nose. Hold on, we'll see what I really look like. So different. You won't even recognize me. Um, so... Um, so I, I always did the play and not the musical, um, okay. the musical because I was on the basketball team. I am not, again, Newark Academy. I am not athletic. I mean, I am energetic and I'm spirited. I was the captain of the basketball team and the softball team. 
talent, this big spirit, you know, beyond compare, mm -hmm. but you know, to have that opportunity at Newark Academy was amazing. Um, and, uh, so I did the plays in the fall, but I didn't do the musical in the winter, but I always wished I did. I was too busy. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so you, you went to wash you, um, and can you talk about some of your earliest jobs out of college? Yes. Yes. So I graduated from college, you know, I studied comparative art, which was comparative literature, performing arts and French. I got into French, um, with, you know, Madame Berg, um, and, and Dr. Schaffler. Um, and I graduated and I was like, I have this big lumpy, um, liberal arts degree. What do I do? So I ended up getting a job, uh, teaching theater at city arts, youth city lights, youth theater, and then working for this woman at a nonprofit called community works, which provided multicultural and ethnic entertainment, um, through funding and grants to, um, underserved kids in public schools in New York city. And I loved it, but, um, it, it wasn't quite what I wanted to do. I, I would go to a lot of these events and, um, and, and uh, facilitate them or introduce them. And I was like, I need to be in the events. I don't wanna be facilitating them. I need to do something. And I was loving uh, teaching acting, but again, I was like, I need to do something bigger. I need to do something more. And the woman who I was teaching acting with, her um, daughter was a page at CBS. And she's like, you know what? I think Joan Rivers is looking for people. And I was like, I love Joan Rivers. Oh my gosh, I like my idol. So I started working in television. I knew nothing about television. I mean, for all I knew, the camera was like Joan Rivers, RuPaul, Joan Rivers. Like I didn't know about multi-format and directors and cinematography and, you know, studio taping. And I got there and I was like, I love this. So after Joan Rivers, I quickly got slurped up by the Ricky Lake show. I was a like a PA, then a researcher, then an associate producer, then a producer, got um, promoted very quickly on the Ricky Lake show. And I loved it. And I was like, I love television. I love this, but like, I love kids. And I, I like kids have always been my thing, you know, at Newark Academy, I was hugely involved in the community service. Mm -hmm. I think I won the community service award twice in a row. I did the ski Olympics. I did the special Olympics. I did, I worked at daughters of Israel nursing home. I, I just, I could not get enough of volunteering. It was like so fun and and just rewarding for me and so amazing. So I was like, I love kids. I need to, oh, I did uh, kids for kids. I went around to um, daycares and preschools and I entertained people. So I was like, I got to get back to kids. So I got a job at Nickelodeon and then I, and then, you know, since then, this is just like two years out of college. Um, I've been in kids entertainment ever since then. And I worked at Nickelodeon. I worked at Disney. I worked at Nickelodeon again and go noodle and etc. Cool. And before we get to go to you did you also authored a book. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that and how that came about? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, I was at Nickelodeon. And at this point, I helped launch a network for them called Noggin, which was a joint venture between Sesame Workshop and Nickelodeon. And I had a contract with them. I was I was doing contracting work. I, I have, you know, um, vacillated throughout my career with being like, I'm full time and I'm doing this, like, and I'm just going to do one thing. And then like, I need to do lots of things because I need to stimulate all different parts of my brain. So this, this part, I was doing a lot of things and it just so happened that like my contract ended up, uh, ended about like three weeks after I gave birth to my first child. And I was like, Oh wow, I don't have anything. What am I doing? And I had like a newborn and I was like, I don't know that I can go out and be getting a job right now. I don't know what I'm doing. So I was a little bit stressed and one thing, and this is true for when I was at New York Academy, when I'm stressed, I craft. Like when I was studying for my SATs, I was like prolific at making beaded rings. And like when I was studying for a test, I was always like making friendship bracelets or tie dyeing. So I had this baby, I was like, what am I doing? So I started like crafting, blinging out things, tie dyeing things, embroidering things. And I met all these new mothers and at baby massage or at classes or at the park. And they were all like, oh my gosh, I love that. Where'd you get it? And I was like, oh, I made it. And they were like, oh, will you make me one? I'll pay you. And I was like, no, but I'll teach you. So I started a play group with women and I taught them how to make these crafts for or inspired by their kids. 
And that turned into a class at the JCC and at Kidville. And then somebody reached out to me about a parents magazine article. And then somebody found that and they asked me to write a book. Um, and it was great. I mean, it took a very long time. I'm used to television. That's like snap, snap, snap. Let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a very long time, but it was super fun and rewarding. Cool. Very cool. Um, so let, let's talk about Go Noodle. How, how did you get involved with Go Noodle? How did that come about? Um, uh, again, you're, you're reaching me at these two like pivotal moments. So again, I was working, I worked at Nickelodeon for seven years. Then I left for a couple of years. Then I went back for another five years at the end. I went back and I ran, um, parents and preschool digital at Nickelodeon mm -hmm. and, um, I was sort of like, eh, I don't know that I love on <laughs> after five years. It should have been after five months, but I, um, after five years, I was like, I don't think I love online. Like I miss television. I want to go back. And even though I was making some, you know, some apps and some videos for the web and some videos for YouTube, I still was like, I, I want to be elsewhere. So I left and this woman who was in my daughter's first grade, first grade class was like, am I crazy? Or like, do you work at Nickelodeon? And I was like, oh, I did, but yesterday was my last day. And she said, well, I know these people in Nashville, they have this healthcare product. They want somebody who's like creative and fun and knows kids and who knows how to make stuff. Will you meet with them? And I was like, I'll meet with anybody. I've never been to Nashville. So I flew to Nashville and I met with them. And they were these guys that had a company called Health Teacher and they made um, health education curriculum that was used in schools for kids K through 12. And it was like, they were downloadable PDFs and they were like, we want to bring this to life. Like smart boards are in, what can we do? How can we use this medium? And so I was like, oh, let's do this. And I started creating a boatload of videos for them and content for them. And then I joined them as a co-founder. We created this thing called Go Noodle. We went into schools and it just naturally exploded. No marketing no fancy stuff like it was literally like these commercials that they had in like the 80s they were like and they told two friends and they told two friends and so on and so on and so on we went from 10,000 teachers which was from a list we had from the old company to 70,000 teachers in two weeks wow. um and then to 650,000 teachers which is about 15 million kids in two years with literally i don't even think we had we weren't even on Facebook. Like we didn't even have a social media, but it was a free like class culture changing resource that teachers like had been just waiting for and it transformed their classrooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a, that's incredible. It's an incredible story. And uh, you know, my daughter and all her friends are talking about them. Do you have a favorite video that you sort of came up with or an idea? Well, I made every video on Go Noodle. Even um, uh, I left there about two years ago, but I left them with like 94 videos and I was in different states of production. I was like, continue to release these. And I even just saw that they released one this week. Um, I, I really like them all. I mean, one of my first, you know, Popsico is iconic. It's a classic. That's where I'm a hot dog in one of the many and milkshake. The videos I did with Cuckoo Kangaroo, those were really special. Yeah. Um, but I also love Kitty High Five. That was one of my first hits, um, that I get licensing, you know, like I get like, um, $86, um, ASCAP checks from <laughs> once a, once a month, um, $86. And, you know, I'm like, that will give me eight cappuccinos. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like them all. I really, I love a lot of the mindfulness videos that I did. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the work that I did with like social emotional learning and mindfulness and kind of setting intentions and having reflections, doing a lot of breath work with kids. Um, I think I found like a fun, creative, visual way to make that something that kids enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. I, like that. I, used, I used to have the app. Uh, popsico and those songs stuck in my head uh when my son would would listen to this yeah. <laughs> so i know them well um what's your creative process like um gosh i am always like like there's like popcorn going on in my brain um yeah. i'm always like thinking creating everywhere i am i love media 
I, I love content. I love information. So I'm always like slurping it up everywhere, whether it's talking to somebody or like watching. I watch a lot of television. I love TikTok. I watch, you know, YouTube. I'm always kind of like taking in content, taking in the world and just like percolating and getting ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm an, I'm an idea person. I just, I don't know that I have a creative process. It's just living for me. Yep. Like that is a creative process. Yes. So you, you said you left Go, Go Noodle two years ago. Um, what, what have you been doing since then? And what are you doing now? Um, so I have been consulting. Well, I, uh, I've been consulting since then. I have done so many cool things. I was doing work for HBO Max. Um, they are, uh, HBO Max is the same as Cartoonito. Um, so, you know, it's Warner Media, which was now, mm -hmm. has now been combined with Discovery. But at Warner Media, they owned Cartoon Network and then they made a kind of like a Nick Jr. or a Disney Jr. called Cartoonito. And they had all these amazing shows and they wanted to create um, kind of uh, accessible experiences based on the shows for kids and their parents. So I developed all this content for them to like, whether it was crafts or games or activities or fun stuff, I would take their shows like Blippi or Odo or Little Ellen, and I would make um, fun content, you know, like experiences, kind of like marrying my crafty mamas with my um, my web experience that I had at Nickelodeon with my uh, content experience that I've had. Um, I did that. I did an amazing project. I love um, YA content. Right now, mm -hmm. I'm about to watch this evening the finale of Tell Me Lies, which is a YA um, show on, based on, I, I believe, based on a book um, on Hulu. But Harper Collins tapped into me, and there were uh, I knew some people there from working at Nickelodeon. They're like, "Do you still love YA?" I'm like, "Totally. I watch everything. I read everything." They're like, "We have a project for you." They gave me their current catalog, their future catalog, had me look through it and say, yes, yes, no, yes, no, for what could be adapted, what would be a really rich piece to adapt into a television show or a film. And then I went through their backlog and I ended up identifying 20 books that I thought had potential. I read all 20, wrote summaries on them in like eight weeks. It was like this amazing power project. I was so, it was so fun for me. It was like, awesome. Um, Nearpod is an awesome ed tech company. I did a big project for them creating brain breaks. They, they had admired my work from Go Noodle. So I did mm -hmm. that. Um, and then I went, I worked for a little bit at a startup called Beanstalk, which was live television for preschoolers. It was sort of like Blippi meets virtual learning meets Blue's Clues. Um, it was essentially like a Zoom call with 25 preschoolers where a host would be dressed up as a banana, you know, be going bananas with Hannah Banana. And she would continue to tap in in real time with these kids. So, you know, Steve from Blue's Clues or Joe or whichever, uh, uh, whichever host you're into, um, mm -hmm. he, uh, you know, will say like, do you see it? Where? Oh, great. But he's not like he can't hear you. He's not really listening to you. He doesn't, you know, he's not there. Mm -hmm. This Hannah Banana was there. She was talking, saying, Zoe, really? Oh, you really like that? Tell me more. And Zoe would tell a story and she would say, Does anybody want to ask any questions to Zoe about her experiences with pickles? So um, it was this like amazing community, inspiring, enriching platform. I, I worked there for a while. It was a startup. And as I like to say, it stopped down. Um, because it ran out of money. Um, and right now I'm working for this awesome company called Tinkercast. Um, they have a, a podcast. Your kids may know it. Wow. In the world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It is from uh, starring Guy Raz and Mindy Sterling from uh, NPR. And it's like, I, I mean, this is their publicity material, but I, I believe it's the number one podcast for kids. Um, and it's super awesome and adorable. And they really want to get into creating content for YouTube because they're a podcast. So they're going to start to put their podcasts on YouTube to make them, you know, have a wider reach and more accessible to everybody. Um, and they want to create some unique and original content for YouTube. So I'm mm -hmm. doing that for them. 
That's so great. I mean, one of the things I hear a lot in, in your stories and your journey has been the importance of connections, the connections you've made and how that sort of moved you along. And something that we, I talk to young alums about when they're looking for advice. Um, so, so it's great to hear that. Um, is there something that you've always wanted to do, but, but haven't done yet? Uh, yes, there is. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I, I actually, it's funny because normally if I tell this story of myself, um, I would start it as, what did you want to do when you grow up? Right. And I was like, mm -hmm. I want to be on Sesame street. I wanted to be on Sesame street. I'm not an actor. Um, I don't, you know, I, I speak French thanks to, uh, the French I took at York Academy and at WashU. Um, but I wanted to be on Sesame street. Um, I, you know, and I, I've had these experiences when I was at the Ricky Lake show, I was on the show a couple times at Go Noodle, I'm the not dog. At my last job at Beanstalk, um, I created this character called Abby Pickles because it was a live show. So a lot of times people's internet went out or they had an emergency or they got like an amazing call back. There were actors. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, take it. And when people were in a pickle, I would dress up as a pickle and I call myself Abby Pickles and um, I loved it. And it was super fun engaging and interacting with the kids. So I, and I say this out loud for accountability for myself, <laughs> I am working on right now, just in my spare time, you know, when I'm not doing stuff, I'm creating a YouTube channel of Abby Pickles and I, um, I, I, I want to, you know, it, it's my version of being on Sesame Street. I'll mm -hmm. take YouTube as a pickle. That's okay. Um, but <laughs> it's really fulfilling and really fun. And since Beanstalk stopped down, I did um, talk about connections. I did um, stay in contact with a lot of the kids that were regulars on Beanstalk. I just really mm -hmm. adored them. I watched them at all times. I remain connected with their families. And so I host a pickle play date every Thursday with these kids just for fun, just like out of the kindness of my own heart. I'm like, I love these kids. I'm, I want to watch them grow. I want to entertain and enrich and engage and educate and be educated by them. So um, I'm going to have my Abby Pickles YouTube channel. It's going to be amazing. Cool. And uh, that's one thing I haven't done and I need to do. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for talking to us and sharing your story. And and uh, I'm excited to seeing that. Just looking forward to seeing the Abby Pickles videos and uh, all the other content that I'm sure will be coming out of your brain soon. So thank you, Abby. Of course. Of course.